Hi guys, welcome to another video and welcome to Tony's Patch, a Northumberland Wildlife Trust Reserve in the south of the county. Now I've come here today for a spot of macro photography, with the only problem being that I don't actually own a dedicated macro photography lens. However, I have just purchased a set of extension tubes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you, by using the lenses you own, coupled with a set of inexpensive extension tubes, can produce near macro results. Macro photography on a budget. So what exactly are extension tubes? Well, they are just that. The tubes. As you can see, you can see straight through it. There's nothing there. There's some electrical contacts. Uh, simply that we shall transmit information from your camera body to your lens. But apart from that, it's just a tube. To be honest, this is the Viltrox version for my L-mount camera. The construction's quite poor, but it's, it's metal, it needs to be metal. And as I say, it's just a tube. But how can you produce near macro results with an extension tube? Well, effectively what it does, it moves your camera lens away from the sensor more. And as you move it further away, you actually just increase the magnification of that lens, which in turn means you can effectively focus closer. Now this set of extension tubes has cost me, I think it was about 45 pounds from Amazon. And basically it comes with two different tubes. You get a 12 mil and you get a 24 mil. You can use the two together. It's generally not recommended, but you can. And that means you get the maximum amount of distance of your lens from your camera body, which in theory increases the magnification. Now in the past I've used extension tubes on Canon cameras and I've always just used the 24 mil. I think, in fact, I think I, I didn't even buy a 12 mil. And I think I'm probably gonna stick with that today. But as you can see, the 12 mil is a lot smaller, so it'll be a lot closer to the lens. The lens is just moving out a little bit. The reality is the magnification will not be that great. You get a bit more magnification, but it's still not perfect. The 24 mil I think will be a good all round one to use. So that's what I'm going to go for today. As I say, I wouldn't use the two together, but because there is simply no optics in it at all, there's no glass, hence why they're so inexpensive. And this means there's actually no drop in image quality. So it is true macro photography on a budget um, and it will produce great results. It's just, the downside is a bit of trial and error with the autofocus and things like that. But let's go and have a wonder. Let's go and find something to photograph and then I'll talk you through how you should actually use them. So I've just taken my first shot. It's not very exciting to be honest, but it's more I want to demonstrate how, what the tubes can actually do. I'm shooting a shutter priority at 2.50 of a second to try and counteract any slight breeze. Uh, I'm on auto ISO again, so I can sort of control the light that way. It's shooting pretty much wide open at f4, which I don't mind for this shot because it's a simple flower portrait. I say, not very exciting. But that's the shot. We've had a tube, so that's at the closest focusing distance with this lens. So now all I need to do is separate the two tubes. I've got to say the construction of these Viltrox tubes is pretty horrible compared to the ones I used to own on my Canon. Now these, these are, they're pretty nasty. Shouldn't make any difference optically because there's not really much to them, but it's just, it's just, it's a bit of a shame. I'm sure I could have done that a lot better. But there we are. So as you can see, no, basically the lens has be moved out. So in theory, the magnification will be higher. Okay, I'm going to see if I can actually go closer. Straight away, it's looking bigger. Now, if you look at the lens, you'll see I'm now crazy close to my subject. And I'm wondering if I could even go closer. And as you can see straight away, the problem with this is going to be that if you're trying to photograph a bug, a bug's not going to be happy, is it? But as you can see from the shots, I'm getting closer and closer to the flutter, and in turn, my depth of field is diminishing. 
because basically the closer you focus to your subject, the shallower that depth of field will become. So when you sort of get into near life-size reproduction, your depth of field becomes very, 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 very small. So if you were photographing trees from a distance, because you're focusing a way off, your depth of field is a lot greater. As you get closer and closer, your depth of field gets smaller and smaller. So that means that now, because I'm focusing even closer to the subject than I was before, that my F4 basically is not really giving me enough depth of field to cover the subject. It looks quite pleasing. But if we're being a bit picky, the depth of field isn't great enough. So straight away, we can see the obvious disadvantage of using an extension tube like this between your camera and your lens is the fact that whilst it will really magnify your subject because it allows you to effectively focus a lot closer and it has no downside at all in optical quality, what it does mean is you're virtually on top of your subject, which can be a bit of a problem. But you know, that was a real extreme example because that flower was incredibly small. So what we were doing then, we were probably achieving life-size reproduction by using just a kit lens, you know, and really that's quite impressive. But I think it, the question in my mind is, whilst that's great for doing sort of small flowers in that sort of situation, what about if you want to get a bit more creative? What about if you want to do something like we did a couple of weeks ago with black backdrops? So let's have a wander around again and see if we can find something suited and see if it's actually possible to do a black backdrop with an extension tube. Whilst I was about to pack my bag away then, what I noticed was I noticed a sort of fly sitting on my bag. So I took a quick handheld shot. So I shot it at 500 of a second because I wanted to try and keep it steady as possible, which at F4 cranked the ISO up to ISO 6400. Now I think that's telling because I think that's showing you that there's actually quite a lot of a light loss happening. Now that isn't a deal breaker, but it is something you definitely have to keep in mind and perhaps external lights would be useful. But you know what, this is always the case with macro anyway, because there is another degree of it that I was probably shading the subject. Now, if you watched my video from a couple of weeks ago, you know I'm a great fan of shooting flowers against a black backdrop. It's a technique that I love doing for macro photography, but I've never actually done it in combination with an extension tube. Now, of course, the disadvantage I'm finding is the fact that I'm actually really close on my flower. So whilst I have got a nice small flower filling the frame, What's actually happening is I don't have much room to work around the flower with my flash gun. But we'll give it a try anyway. So a quick recap, I'm not going to go straight through everything about how to shoot flowers in a black backdrop because I did do it very recently. But as a quick recap, set your camera to the base ISO, set your shutter speed to the flash sync, which in my case is 250 for a second, it may be 180 for a second on your camera, all depends. Um, set your aperture nice and high, f20. Now I'm finding with an extension tube, f20 is uh, essential. And then manually dial in power on your flash. And then it's just a case of taking a few different shots. And I must stress not to merge them, because I did ask people, people asking this question before of do you merge the finished files? No, you don't. All you're trying to do is find that optimum angle to create the shot you want. And when I found it, I shall put it up for you to look at. Okay, you get extra points if you notice the little bug that creeped onto my flower. Added bonus. Um, and actually, it does go to show how much magnification you can achieve simply by using an extension tube to move your lens a bit further away. Now an extension tube will work with pretty much any lens, but you know, the reality is that some lenses will work better than others. I'm finding this 24 to 105 is working pretty good actually, quite pleased with it. And I'm, I'm also pleased to say the autofocus is actually not too bad. You can find that the autofocus can be a bit unreliable as soon as you put an extension tube into the equation. And I suspect half the thing is, is that the Panasonic S5, the the autofocus system is contrast based, so I think it's actually not struggling. Now, if this was a face detect autofocus system, I, I do wonder if it may struggle a little bit more, but yeah, that's, that's, that's working great. So it's really, there's no hardship with that. But as you've probably noticed, I am, I am losing a bit of light by moving my lens further away. And that makes sense, doesn't it? 
you know, the closer you are, the lighter comes straight through the glass, straight into the sensor. If you move it away, you know, you're changing the angles and yet basically you would expect to be a little bit of a light drop off. At least it's not drastic, but coupled with being having to get a lot closer and having to try and maximize your depth of field, definitely light becomes far, far more important than you may have otherwise considered. And of course, a breezy day like today is not really ideal, but black backdrop, flash, you're pretty much sorted because you can freeze it at 250 for a second. Basically macro isn't all about small little flowers, is it? So here what I'm doing, I've got a frond of ferns and I've come nice and close. And I've, I'm working at the minimum focusing distance, which is working quite nicely in all fairity. It looks quite a nice little shot. Manually focusing, I find that's, is a little bit easier with macro. Be it with an extension tubes or with a dedicated macro lens. And using my reflector, I'll just try and bounce some light into the appropriate places. Now, a good thing about a reflector is not only can you reflect light in, you can also diffuse light, which in this case will look absolutely terrible. But you know what I mean. So it does work nicely. Good for the beach. So if you go to the beach and you want to do macro, it's nice to have a nice diffused light. Just put that over the top of your subject and um, the direction of the light, and it'll obviously it will make the night light nicely diffused. Okay, so we've really ascertained the disadvantage of using an extension tube is the fact that it's basically it's gonna block out a bit of light. And also you're gonna to have to work quite close on your subject because that's the whole idea of it really, to let you focus closer to your subject. But there's, a, there's another huge one which I haven't mentioned so far and I'm gonna switch this camera onto video to show you what it is. So now I'm going to focus on the camera which is actually filming me. And you will see it's focusing absolutely fine. So now I'm going to try and focus behind on inf in infinity. And basically, as you will see, it's hunting terribly I'll switch it to manual focus. So you see, manual focus, I can focus on you. Try and manually focus on the infinity behind. There's just no chance of doing it. And basically, this is a disadvantage of using extension tubes. Suddenly, your lens becomes limited to these close focus distances. So for example, if you wanted to use this as a walk around lens, maybe shoot a bit of macro and then shoot something in the distance. You simply couldn't do it. I always sometimes use a macro lens as a portrait lens. So then for think weddings, I could be photographing rings, take a ring, photograph it, and then maybe photograph a bride sort of five minutes later, and I can use the same lens. With this setup, what I'd have to do is physically stop and take off the extension tube to be able to take the portrait and then put the extension tube on to do the ring. So, you know, budget macro comes at a cost that really it's the flexibility. So I think the crux of the problem is, is the fact that you can achieve near macro results with extension tubes, but there are a lot of hard work. But somebody recently wrote a comment on one of my videos saying that you should always take the hardest route when learning photography. And whilst I don't necessarily agree with that, that perhaps if you're learning macro photography, perhaps use an extension tube to start off with to see if you actually like macro photography. Perhaps that's not a bad thing, you know. Work that a little bit harder, get used to manual focusing, get used to controlling your own light. And then if you find you do still enjoy it, your results will be good because ultimately an extension tube is not going to cause too much of an issue with the results. And if you enjoy it, you can then invest in a proper macro lens. So yeah, it's a good introduction. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something from it. If you have, do please give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you again for another video very soon. Thanks for watching.